And we are live. Welcome to InSync Live episode 7. It's our first episode of the year. My name is Ridwan and today we have the deep, deep honour of having Timothy J. Rodriguez, who is a lecturer with more than 21 years of experience teaching for the Media Arts and Design School in Singapore Poly. Mm -hmm. And before joining SP, he was also a music composer and audio engineer for Television Corporation of Singapore, which is now known as Mediacorp. And his notable works have included composing music for shows like local favorites, okay, like Growing Up, Triple Nine, Shiver, yeah. Under One Roof. Yeah. Did I miss anything out? <laughs> well, <that. laughs> Thanks yeah, to him for doing right. this. No problem. It's a pleasure. Normally, how I like to start things off is to just ask you to share a little bit about your personal story. Right. And you can choose to share whatever you feel like sharing today. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, so right at the beginning, because you know, one day I came back from school in primary three, and my father told me there's a piano there. I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "There's a piano there. It said you're going to learn it." <laughs> <laughs> so it was a shock for me, but you know, I'm glad that happened. Yeah, he he was a musician, uh, you know, almost self self taught. He did take uh, lessons in guitar and stuff like that, but mm. that was later on. But you know, he played the accordion and stuff like that. piano. Yeah, and my mom could play the piano just by 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 ear. Wow. So yeah, so I got into playing the piano, and that was the beginning. And then um, you know, my father was adamant about me making music a career because he was working at that time. He didn't like so much being working, although he was the boss. He didn't like working for a company. Okay, he thought, yeah. why don't you do things on your own? Be a music teacher, and then wow. you know, you know, be your own boss. That was his idea. I see. I yeah. See. <laughs> so, yeah, I did. Uh, you know, we we took the exam, music examinations, and stuff like that. And then, of course, O levels came in the way, and then army. And then after army, I I went to work uh, with my cousin who had a music school. Okay. So it was Royston Music School. I think it's long gone by now, but uh, that was in Ulu Pandan, uh, you know, Pandan Valley. It's a condominium, so we were there. And then the. There was an opening in uh, SBC at that time, Singapore Broadcasting Singapore. Corporation. That was before it became TCS. Wow. Right. So, and then uh, I applied and I, I basically, the, the reason why I applied for that is because I was interested in sound. I would heard uh, Steely Dan, which is... Oh, you know, I love Steely Dan. Oh, Steely Dan. I heard this one <laughs> album, which was uh, Gaucho. Okay. So okay. I bought the record and I thought, wow, the electric piano really, the sound of the electric piano, sh you know, blew me away. I thought, how did they get that? You know, how, how did they get it to sound like that? How did they blend all this stuff together? And then, so I got interested in, in doing sound. And it, there was an, an opening for an operations officer. An operations officer would, would you know, they'd help out in the radio uh, shows and mm -hmm. they would do sound, record the uh, the band. With, uh, you know, SBC had an orchestra. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, uh, I went for that and then uh, I got in. And then, so before, before this, you had not done like live sound or... No engineering no, no, of no, anything. No. I was I was basically teaching piano and uh, an organ. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, in the music school, and I, I was the manager, so I had to deal with MOE. Oh, okay. Because okay. MOE had uh, that they started looking at the syllabus of uh, all the music schools, making sure that everybody had uh, kind of you know, systemized the, and standardized. Yeah, systemized and standardized. That's I see, right. That's I see. right. Which is a good thing because you know then everybody has this. It's like uh, you get uh, a level playing field in, in, in terms of what uh, you to expect when you when you sign up to a school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the baseline level of education is consistent. Eh? Yes, that's right. That's right. I so see. consistency. A question I have then for that is how how do you learn about sound engineering and was it all on the job or was it through research? You Many of it was on the job and and the the guys who were experienced, you know. Uh, uh, in radio those days and they used to record the orchestra and then so you pick up techniques from them and of course we had people from uh, uh, the BBC and uh, NHK who came down and, and gave us uh, lessons as well you know techniques and stuff like that you know taught us about microphones and, you know pick up patterns and uh, the difference between condensers and dynamic mics Ooh. and uh, and uh, what what you should use uh, you know what they use these mics for right, you know right, right. And, and so you pick up from them and then uh, of course, the, most of it is by you know practical. Mm -hmm. You 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 learn and then you, you apply. So by recording and 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 sort of like listening to what you're doing, and 
what you what how people set up the mics and then you go and try it out for yourself and then you experiment because you know that's what it is yeah, yeah. You, you, what, it, what, what happens is I shift the mic here you know and I point it there so or I, I change the type of microphone right you and, and you're learning and doing at the yes, same time you know? yes actually that is the best school I agree in, in terms of uh, of course in those days we had a lot of opportunity because we were recording every day every day eh? yeah wow. there wasn't MIDI Oh, yeah, there wasn't yeah. anything Organic like that. There wasn't all, all that stuff. Yeah, so if you want to do a recording, you had to come into the studio. You had to have a musician. You had to have Human an engineer. Being. You had to put the mic and you had to record the thing and then you had to mix it. Yeah. And like a question is, because you did engineering and you also did composition when you were, mm. you were there. Which came first? So the engineering thing was first and then it kind of... Yeah, so I taught music, as you know. Yeah. But basically classical you know, piano and uh, organ. Organ was with the uh, Yamaha syllabus. Okay. And then after that, uh, uh, audio engineering. So, you know, we didn't term it as audio engineering in uh -huh. those days, you know. We were, we were sound guys. Sound guys. People yeah. sound guys. You get the sound guy to do the recording for you and then that, that was it. But, you know, in those days, we didn't even have uh, many, much of the stuff that we did was direct to two track. In other words, right. we'd have the band in there and we'd mix it live in the studio and oh. dump that to tape two track stereo that's it right 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 yeah sometimes with the singer in there as well and you're kind of you're kind of mixing it it's like your it's own live. performance with their performance exactly Beautiful. you're mixing it live and then you know so if the thing goes wrong you'd have to stop the tape i see and then start all over again there's no you, you, yeah you can't no like punch in or yeah you can't if they make a mistake or if you accidentally forgot to press the record Ooh. button, you need to put the mic on and tell you guys, can we do that again? <laughs> has has it happened? Yeah, something happened. You <laughs> never admit your fault. You say, something happened yeah, accidentally. Okay. Yeah. That's and energy. Then, yeah. So, yeah. It's, wow. uh, but it was cool because when you did that, you learn how to balance that, that stuff live and, and get a good mix. Because what happens is that after you record that, you play it back for them to hear. So the musicians hear what you've done. Straight away. Eh? Straight away. Wow, wow, that, wow. that was the mix. I yeah. think this lends an investment in like the sound source being correct from the beginning. Yeah. Which is, I think, different now in this day and age. It's different because everything is uh, is being cooked now. I, mm, yeah. I, I was recently thinking about it. You know, we teach all our students to use plugins and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. They have a wealth. I mean, what they have in the laptop is like a five or six studios worth of equipment <laughs> right. that uh, before. Because, you know, we... In, you had to physically patch. In, in, you only had one or two compressors. Mm. You didn't have a wealth of compressors. Like here, every channel you can have, <laughs> not only instance. one, you can have two, you can have three. Can chain, right? It's up to you. So, you know, I, I, I'm I, kind of like feeling now that that's a bit too much, that the production is being overdone. Overdone? Yeah, I like to, you know, less maybe is more. Get a good musician, get a good mic, record that person and don't do too much to it. That is the performance. You're capturing energy, right? In, yeah, the it's a person's energy. I mean, in terms of level and stuff like that, yeah, you have to, you have to conform to what people require from you. You know, if you if you're gonna put it on Spotify or Apple, you need to have a, a standard. Mm. But then, other than that, it's something that I feel that you know, if if music, it brings the musician is the, is the person. Mm. This is mm. all this added stuff this production that goes on behind the scenes that you chop up his voice or her voice and you play around with all of that and somehow or other in that process some of them I feel that some of the music dies it's just too much it's like, and it's becoming quite common mm. you keep hearing similar stuff all the way I feel like it's a language that mm, the current generation understands better mm. because it's all they know really sometimes yeah. nobody's going back because why? because more guys are getting uh, as I as I was saying before, into live performance. Mm. So in a live performance, okay, production is less because mm, you, mm. you're listening to the musicians playing live, right? Uh, in a, well, right, it could be in a pub or a, in a club or you know, or in a theater, whatever it is. It's a live performance, and you're there, you're watching it, and you're listening to it. You're experiencing mm -hmm, it live, mm -hmm. and the person has to play and perform at that level for you to be <laughs> entertained, yeah. right? It's a performance, it's an actual a performance. performance. So that yeah. performance. Is actually you 
you can't go and say oh, well, uh, that vocal now let me let me f- yeah. reverse it yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you can't can I, can well I do you that can't do again? that because you have a keyboard that can do it right yeah. Yeah. I mean you can you can sample and then you can trigger the sample from yeah. the keyboard but that has to be part of the performance person playing the keyboard has to be in time and has to know which key mm-hmm. to press mm-hmm. they get it's that human. going and it, yeah, it's, it's human, human eh? so it's something that I think uh, you you would pay money you wouldn't pay money to go to a, a club and then the guy says hi welcome to my show and break I think that's Thanks for being here and press the play this, button. That's and what you call DJs these and days. bow and and go out. <laughs> no, the DJ is present. He's yeah, moving true, with the though. music and he's he's mixing and he's doing stuff. Responding as he goes, yeah. he's responding yeah, yeah. to what the crowd, the that's atmosphere, true. and the, the crowd is like on it. So in the true. same way, a live musician also they look out into the audience and see what the the response is, and you know there's a difference. It's so so I, I I'm really glad that a lot of things are people are moving back into you know live, more live. That's yeah. great. It's yeah. exhilarating because I I played a live show recently. Yeah. In uh, since phase three. Yeah. It's exhilarating to feel bodies in space again. How we've missed it, right? Since that that lockdown oh and goodness. everything was gone for it, a while, and it's, it's so terrible. different. But you know, you know, hopefully everything comes back this year and we we hopefully. get back into the swing of it, which yeah. is you know, which is going to be great. I, you know, we've we've had a number of students who come and and now they're playing live and then uh, you know that's. It's it's a joy to see them doing it. Right? The eyes are all shiny, you know, in person. Yeah, it's great. Right. Yeah. A, a question is because you've been mentioning students and all that. Like, uh, I have a question around the DMAT course, which for the viewers out there, it's called Digital Music Audio and Technology. Uh, diploma in Music and diploma Audio Technology. Diploma in Music and Audio yeah. Technology. Because I. I understand you were part of the creation process of this ah, course. Yes, yes. yes. And I'm, I'm deeply intrigued by this course because of its content, when it was actually introduced to Singapore, and also its influence. Like I have a number of friends who are still in the industry. And in fact, even our past six guests, I think three of them were from DMAT. <laughs> and they're all from varied industries, in a sense. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you first, like, what was the creation process like for a course like DMAT, which is, I think, very brand new, To Singapore at that time for the polytechnic level, that's right. It was the only one when it first started, and uh, in fact, there was uh, you know some questions as to whether the polytechnic should get into doing right. um, uh, the art stuff, like you know, because polytechnics were actually basically they were engineering schools, right? Right, mechanical engineering mm-hmm. and electrical engineering and all of that. That's where they they started, you know, you know, and architecture, and so. But you know. Uh, Later, stuff got added, like media. Yeah. So yeah. multimedia, multimedia technology. So we had a course in multimedia technology, which I taught in as well. I And see. that one had some <coughs> component of music because you know you, you can't have media yeah, without yeah. having music or audio in it yeah. because you know audio is a big part of it. So they had to get somebody in. That's how I went. I got into the poly in the first place. I yeah. see. So you were teaching that first. Yes. I see. I yes. see. And this was And then, in SP already. Yes, I see. and then we had an idea that we should actually move more into the music area, which was okay. a big question. And that we were quite, su- you know, we were supported by our director at the time, Mr. Song, and um, he 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 told us, but you know, he he's looking at it, and so we were encouraged because you know, oh, wow. we want us to teach music. Wow, that's this, that, you know, oh, we love music, fun. of course, and it's going to be fun. So we had to put the course together, and we had to think about our perspective. I did. You know, as part of the team was Michael Spicer. I think. Uh, ah yes, uh, Kidia Kid, know him, and uh, he's an Australian and a good, great musician. Uh, he and a couple of us got together and started to think how we we basically based it on ourselves being like standalone guys I who see. could do the music and the, the the composing and the audio engineering on our own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, because we were all two in one, like. Yeah. So, especially like you know, uh, for myself, I I started in the audio engineering, right? Yeah. And then yeah. you know, of course, I was a musician, and then I, I got into composing. You see, that's a story in itself because it uh, when I was in Channel Five, I worked in uh, Studio One in in TCS. It's a it's a television studio. I went there to do mixing. Gurmit, you know, oh, Gurmit wow. Singh had a show called Live on Five, and they okay. they had a lot of music. It's a, like a magazine show. I see. So they had interviews, comedy like sketches, and whatever. It was like a talk show, I and see. then they had music. I um, and then they they wanted somebody to to be able to mix that stuff, oh. you know, because it's all live. I see. I right? see. So so they brought me in, and then when I was there, 
somehow or other, somebody told Kenneth Liang, who was the head of Channel 5, that hey, this guy is a musician, he can compose, you know, he's okay. done some composition before. And so he, you know, in those days, yeah, it, we take a break and then Kenneth passed by one day and said, you, somebody told me you can do this, you want to work for Channel 5 and do, compose for our, oh, our wow. shows. Of course. I mean, why would you say no, right? Why would you <laughs> say, no? would you say this? No? Like, is like something dropped, mm. you know, from heaven. It's it, it's a present, wow. and so I said, of course. And then he did that. He brought me in, and that's where um, I started, you know, composing. Of course, when you it's when you start fun. doing that, you start paying attention to what you're watching on TV too, because mm. you see what how the music is done, right, right? right? So we had all of TV shows from the states and from from the UK. So you know. We can watch. We watch that, and we, you learn as you go along, and so you apply what you hear, you know, yeah. and you do it. It's this. It's a feedback loop. Yeah, it's a feedback loop. And you know what was new then was MIDI. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because we, you know, uh, we use a Mac. Now, uh, my experience with PCs was, you know, you had to type in commands in the old days, yeah, right, awesome, you know, yeah. and, and then you know, with the Mac, you could do almost everything with the mouse. Mm, was mm. a was great. Wow, that's a life changer. Life changer. Yeah. Like, if we share, we, we're going to get back to the DM80 topic. Mm -hmm. If we share a little bit, like, how would it work if you had to compose music for a, a growing up thing or a triple uh, line thing? We have a day. Okay. Sometimes maybe a bit more than a day, depending on the, on the, on the, on the, you know, what they wanted for that particular uh, episode. Okay. So some of it is top music. We, we do we, we had already composed something okay and some of it was they said oh for this scene we want it from here to here we want to we right. want this kind of you know the, the producer would talk to you I see in, in, in television it's the producer in, in, in film it would be the director, the director yeah. Yeah, so he'd tell you okay or she would tell you yeah, music here probably you know, Tim what about something here that's a bit light yeah. or whatever mm. it is and then we do and then they'd come in and listen mm. Mm. right and then once they say okay then we'd, we'd mix it send it off to the dubbing area, and then uh, they would add in the MNE on the other side, and then they would add the music into the the sound effects and whatever it is, and then package the whole thing together. Oh, wow. And your role had to be done in a day. Something uh, timeline day was a day, a day and a half. Wow, I remember staying back. You know, I, we did Shiver. The first sh episode of Shiver was a, a like a tester. Okay, and uh, and we stayed back. You know, I did with this guy called Domingo, who is now in the States, a good trumpet player. Okay. And um, we worked on this shiver thing, right? And then I looked at the time and I looked at him and I said, my God, we've been, hey, we've been at this so long, it's only 5 p.m. <laughs> he said, Tim, it's 5 a.m. <laughs> we, we have stayed the whole, I said, Are you sh yes. <laughs> you know, when you're doing it, you just forget. Yeah, you forget yeah. time. Wow. <laughs> we we weren't even hungry because we were so we needed to get it done and finish it so that uh, we could get that show out the next day for the executive producer to pass it on to management to have a look. My goodness! So that and it's beautiful because you're composing and then you're mixing and kind of at the right. same time also because you're you kind of mixing as you're going as you go along. Right, yeah. right. So you 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 start off you know. As you would often, you know, being a pianist, often enough, right, you would right. you get a piano and you start doing something and then you think, okay, maybe it's either you want an electric piano or a real piano sound and then you would start adding, you know. I see, I right? see. And then sometimes you think, oh, that piano doesn't really, we just want, you know, something else. And and if we wanted access? a guitarist, we'd get a guitarist. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because in those days, the guitar samples weren't great. Mm, mm. Right? Super MIDI, I'm sure. Yeah, it was uh, MIDI sounding. You could yeah, tell it was a yeah. fake guitar from yeah. a mile away. <laughs> but, you know, so you get a real guitarist. Like when I did um, a couple of the sick tunes that we did, uh, we actually got a real guitarist to come in and, and, and dub in the parts. Wonderful. Yeah, so, you know. MIDI, and then, of course, you had we had people who real... Uh, Horn players. Uh, horn players. We had, we had brass and we had saxophone guys still around and they would add their part in. Like, you know, the famous one is, uh, which I didn't do, is Pochu Kang. Okay. I don't really know Pochu Kang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I yeah, mixed that. My ear. Oh, you mixed yeah, that. I mixed that. Da, da, da. And yeah, we, yeah. we were the oi in the studio. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Hey. okay. And then uh, no, no, we got we guys, know. the real brass in there. Because it sounds real, for yeah, sure. It is, it is, it is. And it is real. But the bass is all MIDI. It was I all see. MIDI. Yeah, just the bass and stuff like that, you know. That was a heyday for me for like TV shows. Yeah, yeah, I've not owned a TV since like 
10 years. For you don't own a TV since yeah. then. Would you have a wide screen in your house so you I, watch I, movies? And I, then we, we don't. You don't? Yeah, know? I'm not a fan anymore. You're not a fan, right? But I watched Puan Chukang, Under One Roof, uh, growing uh, up. The old stuff, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm talking to someone involved in that uh, production. Yes, it, it, uh, you know, uh, the old stuff is uh, nostalgic for yeah. people. Yeah. You know, they they remember how Singapore was before. Yeah, now it's, yeah. but it, some of it was short. The scenery is all, you know, the old Singapore. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for them, nostalgia is important. And, uh, you know, especially those who grew up in the 80s and, mm. yeah. Did I grow up in the 80s? No, I was born <laughs> I was born in the 80s. <laughs> you were born in the 80s. Yeah, but you you know, it it, it would have been into the 90s as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it would have yeah, crossed yeah, over. Because at that time the internet was wasn't even there. Oh, was the yeah, internet, yeah, yeah. It wasn't even there. So you, you know, basically you watch TV. That was your pastime. Yeah. yeah. You kind of had to, right? Yeah, your yeah. release. It's either that or radio. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Like so talking around this and also then your influence in creating this DMAT course uh. like how did it pan out eventually the discussions around the syllabus and yeah. what to teach so in three years you know like it's a three year course we people coming in and giving ideas as to what uh, needed to be included in the course and of course we'd, we'd argue and you know and but you know of course we all realized that there, there needed to be some core modules like you know you know for musician musicianship Hmm. music theory right, right, right. right and of course audio recording so in audio recording i came up with the the term uh, recording and mixing techniques okay so r e m t i see recording I see. and mixing techniques so that you know where you, of course you record and then you mix so that was the idea I and see. of course you know we we created studios we built studios so we have three studios in uh, in demand right now in 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 sp I see. recording studios but uh, When we started the course, you know, uh, laptop uh, was just coming into... We, initially, when oh. we started, we had actual physical computers. Main, you know, uh, uh, we had PCs. We didn't even have Macs then. I see. So I see. we used Cubebase when we first started. Cubebase, okay. Yes, we used Cubebase. But now it's all like Macintoshes. And then, you know, laptops became... Because, you know, all right, right, they, yeah. they were starting to stop uh, buying the... Uh, it was expensive to have so many computers in the lab, right? and you had to maintain them so and also the idea was uh, if the the kids had their own laptops they could bring it home and do work mm, mm, mm. they didn't have to be in the school all the time just to use the facilities probably not enough not enough yeah. and and you know you don't want to, you don't want them to stay the whole day there doing mm. you know project work and stuff like that mm. it'd be good if they could take it home and work on it so a laptop was ideal wow. and then you know of course we had software that came along Interesting. and so apple offered the <laughs> you know a bundle i see i and, see in logic And and we went with that. This this is very interesting to me because the course is a new thing, and then mm. all these other new things that were happening and at the same happening. time. And so we we so caught the up. energy yes. meeting. Yes, we oh, had to really we had to move with the times because you know you can't be left behind. You say, oh, no, we'll, we'll keep that for another day, and right, maybe right. that this will become important in the in the future. But no, we 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 have to to keep abreast because the industry is changing and it has changed quite a lot, you know, over the years. From what it was, as I told you, you know, you had to record everybody in those days. Yeah, right now, yeah. you have this one guy with the the keyboard and one samples guy. and what was that? What are we asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Everything is in there. The band yeah. is in there. And <laughs> the band is in there. Yeah, so real, so real. The band's on the grid. And you know, the quality of the stuff is much better than what it ever was before because sampling and everything is, you know, it's fantastic now. Mm-hmm. So uh, you get good quality stuff, right? So, how much of it needs to be live? That depends on the producer, mm. and Do they think, oh, we want a real guy, you know, we want a real trumpet player or sax in here. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. that adds that final gloss. Yeah. yeah of course, yeah. singer, you can't. Yeah. They are. You kind of <laughs> now yeah. can, I think. Yeah, you can, yeah. but ah, nothing beats a real singer. Yeah, you you yeah. need to see a human yeah. delivering yeah. the song because the song is very, uh, it's a human thing. It's very, it's, uh, you know. Such a human thing. That's why they call it humanities because you know music is in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's one of the most human things we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have bird song, but people <laughs> create song with meanings, you know, because they want to reflect what they feel. Mirror, a mirror. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. A question I have for the demon thing, because, like I mentioned, I feel like the graduates from demon are, are different in their very specific individual ways and they are affecting or like having waves of impact in whatever they do. Mm. Be it, are they a songwriter? I think there's arts managers also. 
Yeah. I think there's producers. Like yeah. friends that I know from Demet, I don't know whether you can remember them. Uh, like Adam Shah. Yeah, of course. James Adam. Lai. James Lai. Aaron James Lee. Aaron James Lee. Bunny yeah. Hide, we're talking about Bunny Hide. Hide, one of our yeah, co founders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's beautiful because I feel like the influence you all have and still have on the mm. budding industry in Singapore, the arts and music industry, is complex and probably not expected also. Maybe some of it was, was designed. I think the the breath of influence, like how how do you feel about that when you view the your graduates I'm, and your I'm, past I'm students? I'm so happy that we didn't we didn't change who they were. I see. They they came in and we never told them you must do this, you know you must produce this kind of music. This is what sells. So you can only do pop. Mm-hmm. Forget about the rest. If you do that, you're gonna confine everybody into, and then they can't be creative. You know, you give them a box. Mm. We don't want. We we never wanted to give them a box. So I'm glad that everybody does things differently and and they're into different stuff. So and and that's that's been one of the triumphs of the course that we've not it's really, beautiful. you know, we've we've give. I hopefully we've given them a skill set, mm. and they they know production techniques, right? They know what to do, uh, and how to get the music done, you know, and what it is required to get it up to a standard that is, uh, you know, broadcast mm-hmm. standard. We, we used to say broadcast standard, but it's something that can sell, can be played over the air, and, you know, it's it's quality stuff. You know quality when you hear it, mm-hmm. right? So we wanted that most importantly, not what kind of music. Mm-hmm. That is up to the individual. You come in, you learn, and you produce, and you create. You, we don't, we can't influence your, it's the best Songs ever written were very personal songs. Songs that came from uh, an experience that you, the composer, experienced for themselves or somebody else that they knew experienced it. Yeah. They wrote a story about it and that became the song. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. You know, so and no one else could have really written no, that no song. No one right? else could have done it. They, yeah. they, they did in a specific way that was what they felt. Mm, mm. You know, and, and you know. Of oh, course, you know, we all learn from each other. There's, yeah. there's, there's genres, right? And yeah. the genres... Uh, you know, because you listen to a type of music and you don't live you, in a vacuum. You yeah. don't live in a vacuum, yeah. and you and you probably have a, a preference for certain mm. types of genres when right? mm. you listen to this and that, and 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 that's part of your identity. Mm. Mm. But it doesn't mean that you need to compose in that genre, and, and anybody at any time can influence you, and that's where you know that influence is from outside. Mm. You no, know, but if you know the techniques and whatever it is internally, and you've you've studied it in your your. your you're familiar with what needs to be done, and and, and you understand what how to get it mm, mm, right to a certain point. Then yeah. that is the important thing. You, you, Beautiful, you, yeah, yeah. Because you can bring out the expression then exactly in in the way you should exactly. You know. oh, like twenty one years mm. lecturing at SP. Mm. What what are some like stories or the most memorable students you've had? <laughs> you know in the more than two decades of teaching. I was there. telling you, I recorded Barney. Uh, yeah, Barney yeah, Hide, yeah. Uh, on the drums. And I had four mics on him. We had uh, two of the cheapest condenser, large diaphragm condensers, which which is what we could afford to buy at the time. We were just brand oh. new and we, we built three studios. So, I see. Uh, we didn't have much money to buy equipment, so we had that. <laughs> and then we put uh, SM58 in the kick and the SM58 on the snare. And we recorded him. I see. And <laughs> amazing. We, you know, the way that he played, the touch. It's my favorite drummer. Yeah, he's fantastic. So that, but that came came out in the recording. So, yeah, the audio technology part of it is there. Mm-hmm. You know, you still have to pan it, mix it, EQ it, compress, whatever. But you know, the player is also important. The performance is important. You have to capture that performance. That's the whole idea of recording technology is to capture the performance. You know, you stick a mic on a guitar cab, and you, that's the sound that the guitarist is. He wants. He has his pedal board and he has adjusted the amp to what he wants. You capture that as best as you can and you try to represent it in the mix. That's all. That's all, right? Yeah, that's all. That's, that's basically all. Yeah. No, they, they, you're they capturing is. energy. Well. I really believe that. It, you're capturing true, the energy. Something of someone. It's true. I, I still love the idea of getting the band together in the studio like this, you know, and, and, and having them play and then capturing them. Yeah. I Nothing. think that's how Toto... Oh. You know, Rosanna, that's how it was recorded. They, they were I on, on uh, in the studio, I think, on, on stage. I can't remember. 
there's a story behind it, but it was done live. Yeah. I see. Except for, you know, the main vocals and stuff mm, like that. Mm, yeah. Mm. It's overdubbed from Yeah, it overdubbed. Yeah. But it does translate though. That recording is timeless. Yeah. You know, you, you can listen to it now and still feeling good. There's a certain good. energy la, because, yeah. Of course, you know, some of the, the brass and stuff like that, they were dubbed. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. But, oh. you know, basically that the band playing together with the drummer and the bassist and the guitarist and all that, all in on stage and the keyboard players, you know, um, they were all there together and then they, you know, that energy was captured on tape. I love, yeah. I love that. Right. I love that. that Hopefully we go back to that at some stage. That you know, recording mm. studios are, are are going away now. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah because we're in a people, very nice one. Yeah, yeah, we're in a nice, lovely place. But you know, all the recording studios are suffering from lack of people booking it because uh, everything's done in the box. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good and bad with doing things in the box because if you have a sketch and you have, you want to get ideas out, mm, mm. that. That laptop, that box provides you with the opportunity to do so now. To not lose so you have idea. all the instruments in there. You, mm. you can tweak and, and do whatever you like. And then once that is done, you got to think now, is that going to be what I want? Is this mm. the true mm. representation of what that is? You know, do I want to get true actual guys yeah. and record this? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, you can't do MIDI with jazz. You can't, you there, can't. There's no way. The time feel, the tone. Be, yeah, exactly. The dynamics. No, you yeah, can't. You can't, yeah. Like, another question I have is, like, how has COVID impacted delivery of the education in SP and in oh. your field in particular? Mm. And maybe how do you think that's going to inform future syllabuses now, moving forward? It, it definitely will have some, some influence. Yeah, because, you know, um, as they say, it's, it's the new norm. Mm. You know, so lectures are basically online now. So, you know, is it still online right now? Yes. I see. Even when we're back to school now, we, oh, we wow. the lecture component is uh, for students to do it, you know, online. I have a class on Tuesday. That lecture is going to be available on Monday for them to have a look. I on, see. Right? On Sunday, in fact, tomorrow, I will send out a message telling them the material is available. You go there, you have a look. And then when you come in on Tuesday, it's for the practical side of it. Oh. So we'll talk a little bit about what happened in, the, in that lecture. So we make sure you understand and then we do the practical that's related. Mm. So doing that in person in a space, socially distanced, I see. Right, we, we're actually back in class, but of course right, we, right. we're socially distanced I now. See, I see, And um, yeah, so we, we have this, uh, he will know what I'm talking about, T2044. What is that? The famous place in... Uh, it's a studio? <laughs> Room? Well, it's a it's a, it's a it's a lab. I see. It's a music lab. So, you know, but we, it's a big... It's a bigger, it's the one of the, I think it's the biggest one that we have. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so we have, uh, the students can space out, we're in a class, see. and then they have their laptops, and then we do the practical class there. And I then see. we have the recording studios that just next door. I see. So I if see. they need to record, they just pop into the studio. Oh, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Sure. And do, do you think like, is there discussions around syllabus planning? In terms of, because now there's kind of the new, new norm, to get familiarized with tools well, like conferencing, you know, like that, that yes, sort of thing. Yes. Has that has we, that we, come into play? With Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, everybody had to pick up Zoom in. How to get Zoom in stereo. Yeah, we, right. I still don't know how to get <laughs> Zoom in stereo. <laughs> it's on the internet. Yeah, yeah. We had to figure that out. So, you know, um, but yeah, see, it's, it's a tool. Another, it's a tool. There mm. are always going to be tools being yeah, added. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's basically the content. So how, how can you best deliver this if you can't be face to face, if you can't have, you can't be in the same studio with a person, how are you going to teach them recording techniques? It's oh going to be goodness. tough. But you can give them examples. You yeah. can give them. This is what happens when the snare mic is put right uh, here, pointing to the center of the snare as opposed to on to the rim, towards oh, the rim. There's a different tonality, and a lot of examples are already out there, and you can create that. And you can show them that, and they they can understand that, right? I see. And so when they go into the studio, on then they know, okay, there's a difference, you know, in, in how you place it. Mic and kind of mic you use. Like how has it impacted you in terms of like the clarity of instruction? Do you find that you've had to, you've had to be able to be more concise and clear. And you know, mm. when you're online with with students, and especially when you're doing a Zoom, you've got to remember that you can't be too long-winded with anything mm -mm -mm. because the you know, they're looking at the screen now. Mm. 
and the attention span is going to be short for sure. So you get, get it out of the way, get them to do something, and then set them a, a task, mm. let them explore and do that, and then come back and re- review what you've asked mm. them to do, and then see whether they've done it correctly or not. That's the best plan. That's yeah. the. That's a an interesting flow of time, planning the mm. flow of time. So you have to plan. Yeah, yeah. I try to keep mine as short as possible. I think the students can testify to that. <laughs> I, I generally, di- I don't want to keep them there for long with me talking because, you know, it, it, you're going to lose them. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to lose them. That's so keep it not too short. I mean, don't say, hi, go and do this. <laughs> Bye. No, it's not that. You have to explain what you want them to do and why and the results and then you go and get them to do it and then uh, come back and check it and see how they've done mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know whether everything is okay they understand most importantly mm. and they can apply it's like theory application review yeah, all right. in one lesson that's right, that's beautiful right. yeah. o- on that note right mm. talking about live performances and all that we have a musical guest per episode mm. so we're gonna have a listen to her for a Ooh, bit cool uh, her name is Elena Hatz singer songwriter and performer from India. And she's going to sing for us together with Elsa Michaela her song entitled Afraid to be Honest. I hope I got the title right. It's a lot of info here. <laughs> Take it away, right? you as a story the past cause I'm too scared to be honest my fingers are bleeding from holding so tight can't decide what I want from me I'm tired to keep fighting cause everything I've been missing is slipping from under and I can't commit to this I'm ready to go but I know that I gotta try
Alright, I hope you enjoyed that performance by Elena Hetz. If you like her stuff, or just just follow her. Just support our fellow local budding musician, you know, on her Instagram handle. Which I think it was flashed across the screen back then. Mm. So, Tim, one final question I have for you is... Because we always kind of have a person or individual in mind when we do this podcast. It's for that 16-year-old who's about to graduate with all levels and levels and thinking <laughs> about the future. Mm. Getting into the scene. Yeah. yeah, and in this case, the scene of the arts and the music industry. Mm. What advice would you have for someone like that? I would say basically follow your passion because at the end of the day, it's it. in order to be successful at something, it has to be something that you feel that you really want to be a part of. And, and if you try your best to be part of it and somehow or other it doesn't work out, you still tried and you still attempted and you still did, right? And it still remains a passion with you. Even if you're not successful, who knows? You, you, you might, not be, might not be successful immediately, mm. but it could be in the future. So you, it's that staying power also. But for a, a person who's 16, who's just finished all levels, and is looking at a career, mm. they have to consider basically what, they should basically consider what they, their passion is and also what they see themselves doing in the future. Do they see themselves doing music or media, right? If they do see that, then they have to attempt to do something in that space, mm. right? Come in to courses, not only in the police, but their courses are, elsewhere and then you need to give it a good go that means you need to put in an effort you can't say I want to do something and then if magically it happens I join the course and then wow I'm there you're not because you have to put in the effort right even we, we have students who come in who are already many of them are skilled right uh, like Aaron James Lee <laughs> uh, he I mean you can't teach him anything because he's already yeah. there yeah but he Production techniques and stuff like that, he has to pick it up from us, mm. right? And, you know, proper way of micing the drum set. Although he's a drummer, right? And then seeing that result, uh, that's something that we can add. So if he wants to, if, even if you're a good musician and you know that, you know, you, you can do it, but you want to learn all of that skill set, you know, that comes along with it. Or you want to delve into other areas, you know, media, whatever media, multimedia stuff, like, you know, for example, even if you wanted to get to know, you know, a bit about what animation, video, and stuff like that, then choose courses that have that ability for you to put all these things together, right? So, I, I know I'm plugging my course, but Go media it, arts man. design, media arts design yeah. is something that you, you, you possibly should be looking at. Right? Yeah, in, uh, that's the new diploma that we are starting. Uh, the intake is this this year. An, right? So, yeah, O-level results, and then they're coming in to apply. Uh, so, that media arts and design packages all these elements together right and in fact in first year you have tasters so you can actually taste some of the other modules and uh, the other disciplines that are in there so animation video music music sure. production you know and and then you decide okay i'm suited for this and then i'll go for it so, so the first year cool. yeah. it's kind of like it's you a, take everything yeah. and then secondly you specialize well, everything it's, uh, you know you learn the the, the, the necessary uh, uh, skill sets uh, to put you in the right frame of mind to to start off a journey in media, mm, uh, mm. because you mean, media is a very generic word. It it covers uh, encompasses a lot of things, you know, so a lot of disciplines. Mm. So you know, having said that, you know, there's still some things that are common within that you know, creative mindset. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. how do you how do you do? You know, storytelling is an important part of it because you know, a story music composing a song is storytelling. Story, yeah. So you, you're telling a story. How do how do you best utilize mm, mm. Your, your skill sets to deliver this? Yeah. That's where it becomes interesting. And then you learn that methodology and then you can apply it, you know, and then you become creative, experiment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a way of living, it of is. being yeah, almost, exactly. eventually. Being a creative person is right. And then you a choose lifestyle. The In fact, it's a permanent lifestyle. It is, it, it is. is. Being creative, you can't switch it off. Yeah, you, you, it, it's, it's there a wonderful the lifestyle, yeah, I think. Exactly, yeah. Well, that's, that's, no, that's lovely advice also to like really reflect and 
be conscious about this choice now mm. to give it a proper go and also to give it a proper go yeah yeah because you definitely give it a heck of a go in the beginning also yeah that you do because you need to pick up the skills you know so you have to focus and 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 get to the point where you're really good at it and then yeah that's when the magic happens when you know you've mastered it right then yeah. the tools but you know having mastered it doesn't mean you still don't learn right you you yeah, you still yeah. it's a lifelong process lifelong student yeah, lifelong Being everybody lifelong is student. everybody right. is everybody has to have that mindset i think then you get a growth continuous yes, growth exactly wonderful then thank yeah. you so much for spending your saturday with us no problem It was a pleasure and i think that's all the time we have today great and i'm just going to sign off by saying my name is ridwan this is insing live episode 7 where we interview practitioners from various industries from sound design education engineering musicians artists and i hope to eventually expand into interviewing people from the dance scene hmm. the theater scene and just have the singapore culture be kind of introduced to everyone for free which isn't the case you know normally you kind of have to seek out seek out seek out so on that note i think i will see you next month for episode 8 thank you tim and thank you for tuning in cheers guys <laughs>